Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I am here with an artist, Savina Monet. What is going on? I'm excited about this one because we kicked it over the past weekend. We're actually participated in Juntos, which is a Hispanic Heritage five-part series. But before I get into all this jazz, let's introduce the world to Savina. How are we doing? What's good? I'm I'm doing good this morning. Uh, I got like a little raspy voice going on, but I think it just adds to the effect. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah, it adds, <laughs> adds to the effect. So let's give them a little background. Who is Savina? Where are you from? A little uh, background of who you are. Yeah, uh, so I grew up in Seattle. Uh, and if you're familiar, it's more like Ken Des Moines, further away, SeaTac, you know, a little rougher neighborhood. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I grew up with my mom, who is Italian American, and my dad is Mexican from Sonora. Um, I also have half siblings that are Puerto Rican, so I had this really interesting household of, you know, honoring the different cultures and the, the little differences between like Latin communities, but also just like understanding that we're all still part of this one culture and. Um, you know, I was really raised with my Puerto Rican side of the family, which, you know, isn't even mine. Sometimes I just feel like it is because it's my half siblings, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> so did you go to school up there in Seattle? I did. Yeah, I went to uh, high school. I had a couple of uh, scholarships to go to college, which I really wanted to do down in California, where a lot of my family is in the desert. Uh, but college is expensive. <laughs> um, so after the first year, I had to drop out. Uh, and I actually took my last password check and I used that to like pay my rent and my bills. And <laughs> so we had a little bit of that student debt, um, but it wasn't too bad. And uh, after that, I just entered the workforce. Yeah, so let's let's talk about that before we get into the art. You're currently in the workforce, but you're also an artist. What are you currently doing as a profession? Uh, currently, I'm a graphic designer. I also do collage art. Um, so right now, my income is mostly, I would say, that project stuff, doing logos, flyers, brand identity, websites. Uh, I'm really trying to push back into my my artist self, which still feels kind of silly to say sometimes, but uh, I have this creative outlet that I really want to uh, reinvest back into and uh, make a reality, you know? Yeah. You know, and even being a graphic designer, it seems like you're kind of an entrepreneurial endeavors in that form as well, because you're a contract worker, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I do freelance, uh, which, you know, is terrifying and exciting all at the same time. <laughs> So what made you do kind of, you know, let's, you kind of went through school, you drop out, you get into workforce. Did you kind of go into the graphic design world as soon as you left school? No, I mean, I did a lot of just like quick and easy jobs for a long time, fast food, uh, custodial. It really wasn't until I had this job working as a front desk uh, receptionist where 90% of my day, I just sat on my ass. I did not do anything. Uh, I felt like it was such a horrible way to, you know, make a buck. So what I decided to do was go on to uh, websites like Coursera and find free graphic design courses so that I can start teaching myself the basics uh, and hopefully transition into something that I considered a career. Nice. Can you give us a little background to the folks that might not be aware of Coursera? Give them a little background of what that is, what that website does, and how it helped you. Yeah, of course, there is one of the many uh, websites that have college level courses for free. Uh, and what's really great about Coursera is that you can also join in kind of a classroom uh, feel. So you have a teacher, sometimes you have homework. Uh, there are other students that are in there with you that kind of keep you accountable. You know, you have deadlines, uh, which really makes you want to try, you know. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Now, did you kind of build a network with those students as well? Uh, you know, I, I didn't. I think because it was virtual. I mean, this was in 2014, 15. Um, yeah. 
I still felt like virtual people are strangers, you know, before <laughs> the, like Zoom, everyone's cool with each other. <laughs> uh, so no, I didn't really do that, but um, I did keep in touch with a couple of professors for a while. And when I would create just like fake pieces for my portfolio, I'd send it over and be like, hey, do you have any notes? Is there anything you can add? Um, and sometimes they're pretty responsive. Nice. So let's let's talk about your art. You said you mentioned you're doing collages. Kind of explain what is it that you're doing? Yeah, so uh, I do a lot of digital and physical collage art. Um, really, my inspiration is based on my crazy upbringing, um, <laughs> eclectic mix of like a hippie ass mom and, <laughs> you know, my Mexican side of my family, the Puerto Rican side of my siblings family. Um, so trying to bring all that together, the colors, the textures, but also my own exploration of my Mexican roots, uh, especially with um, my family in Sonora, who after, you know, a lot of genealogy searches and everything I see was part of the Opata tribe. And oh, like wow. My great great grandfather actually led one of the um, rebellions during the Mexican Revolution, and oh, so like, that's cool. I just that's feel dope. this like warrior in my blood. Yeah, you're about to go out and get a freaking a, a patchy suit on, everything. That's dope. Right, I'm, like, you know, I'm I've been doing that genealogy thing and starting to figure out like you know my family is from you know South Leon, Texas, where. Um, you know, indigenous to actually America. So truly we didn't jump the border, the border jumped us kind of thing. <laughs> and it's crazy, like going through that and like, you know, I actually have Spanish background as well. Some Spaniard didn't mean we have a, I'm like, I think it's like 50 or 60% indigenous and like 40% Spaniard and then a bunch of other things mixed in. But it's interesting because you kind of go down there and you get to see your culture. And then it's a culture you didn't even know that you're a part of like me, for example, being knowing I'm Spaniard and then knowing I have a family shield what we have a family shield you know that shit's dope heck yeah no that's super sick or like i don't know if you ever had this moment of when you're looking at uh photos if there are some of you know way way back when and you could see similar uh you know facial features or yep. something or so someone that looked like your abuelita or something you're damn like this is real. This is like in my blood. This is retired always. I know. Isn't it wild how to kind of now, now with your, with your pieces, how do you create your, what medium do you, you mentioned your digital and you mentioned your life. Do you actually like cut out pieces or draw and how do how do you kind of design your collages? Yeah, I'll, I'll cut them out. A lot of times I use a lot of vintage magazines um i'll also use like some of the old calendarios i remember that were like at the grocery stores oh, and yeah. stuff yep. uh, a lot of the artwork that was really big during the mexican revolution to kind of like you know unite the country of mexico um i just kind of love the imagery and the um i guess like patriotism in it you know and i understand there's a lot of like issues with that in itself um but it does still have a uh place in my heart of when I would go to my tia's or my abuela's house and they would have it up and you know I just try to keep in touch with my childhood I think as much as possible nice and what what how big are these pieces and kind of what's all you mentioned like some of the uh Latino Hispanic um traditional art but what how big are these pieces a lot of them the hand cut ones are like five by seven uh, eight Eat. by ten no, no, God, no. <laughs> oh, I was like, oh, Jesus, these are huge. <laughs> yeah, five by seven inches, right? Hey, okay. Uh, eight by 10. I think the biggest one I have is 11 by 14 inches. That one, it actually took me a couple of years to finish. It was something that you would pick up, put down, pick up. Um, but it just kept building and building. And I was like, I need a big frame for this. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. So why, why, why kind of collages? Uh, funny thing you ask. <laughs> so <laughs> growing up, I was always very creative. Um, we were also pretty broke most of the time. So we, we didn't buy a lot of things. We would make things, we would fix things. Um, my mom would make me like skirts to wear to school. And, and so I always felt creative, but when I went into like art class, I didn't know how to draw. <laughs> And so I just, just so defeated by my lack of ability to draw or paint. 
I felt like I wasn't an artist, you know, I went through this whole like identity crisis, um, but I still had this creative mojo inside of me. And so I felt like collage was the way for me to get it out as fast as possible. You know, I have the vision in my head, I see the colors, the textures, and I'm able to just pull these materials that mirror exactly what's going on in my head. What would you say, what piece that you've created recently, or maybe in the past or whatever, what would you say, what piece have you created that you're most proud of? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, I, oof, that is a really good question. I had to think about that <laughs> because there's just so many, uh, you know, I would say most recently, actually one that I'm going to present at Juntos. Mm, yeah. I'm very proud of it because uh, it feels like an exact representation of how my tias would make me feel. Um, so it's kind of a devotion piece, you know, it has these uh, two, I think they're maybe Guatemalan um, viajitas in the middle and they're all dressed up like they're going to, you know, a party, but they got the beers in their hands still. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. And then all around, I just put, you know, like flowers and, and like Aztec uh, gods and like things that I just were representative of, um, my Thea's household when I was growing up like just things that I would feel walking in smelling like the corn tortillas and she's oh, making yeah. food and like ugh, it feels so good and by some blessing I found the perfect frame for it at Goodwill and so it's just beautiful I'm so proud of it man you made me all hungry now I want some enchiladas <laughs> or something for lunch I don't know I'm all <laughs> It's just like, damn, man, now I get that scent of corn tortillas, a fresh tortillas, especially right? the flour ones. You put some butter on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. we call that cholesterol. Don't worry about that, folks. Don't worry about that. That's some that's some grown folk business right there. <laughs> so, so you know, you mentioned actually, you mentioned Juntos PDX. Can you talk a little bit about what you're doing at that event and what the event is? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited for Juntos Um not even because it's five weekends for the entire month of the uh, was it Hispanic Heritage Month, Latino Heritage Month, um, but just of everything that Cristian was able to bring together, like he really wanted to hit on all corners of Latinidad, you know, and what it means to everyone. So me specifically, I'll be hanging up some artwork, uh, and I know during the week of the vendors, I'll also be there slinging all my goods. <laughs> So for sure, check it out. I'm excited for opening week when, you know, there's going to be music and cars and like, oh, I know people are going to come out hard. Mm -hmm. now what 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 days will you be out there slinging some goods? Uh, during the third weekend. I know, I, I don't know the dates uh, exactly, but I know it's the third weekend of Juntos. Perfect. Perfect. Now, what would you say, you know, you mentioned you're kind of like doing graphic designs. What would you say you learned in your graphic design world that's been helping you in your art world? Oh, wow. Like the, the basics, you know, color theory, composition, uh, how to lay things out. A lot of that translates, you know, um, just any sort of like basic art theory or however it is, like that is the knowledge that you need to step to whatever next creative field you want to get to. Like, if you feel like you can't do it because uh, you're not creative or however, like just make sure you got your foundation down, the color theory, the composition, and you'll be good to go. Now, can you give a little bit of an explanation of what those are? What is like, when you say foundation, what is that? When you say color compensation or color theory, what, what are these things? Yeah, so uh, like color theory is the way that colors blend together. I mean, you know, we see it uh, in nature a lot or like in clothes. I guess that's probably the easiest one, you know? When you want to look fly, you gotta, you can go monotone, all one color, you know, all Always black. black. Just go right? black. Right? <laughs> all black, right? Always go black. <laughs> or you can, you know, get the like red with maybe a little gold and, you know, maybe a hint of purple if you're feeling like real crazy that day, right? That's fly. Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get some purple with my red now. I didn't think about there that. You go. <laughs> Throw some in. <laughs> And so did you learn this all through graphic design school? 
Uh, yeah, all through that Coursera, that and um, the School of Life. <laughs> school of <laughs> let me, Life. <laughs> let me tell you, like, um, since I was self-taught, you know, I had to take on a lot of, like, I know people say don't do it, but I took on a lot of free projects or like low pay projects because I knew I just had to build something. Uh, and I made a lot of mistakes <laughs> and God bless them for having patience with me or, <laughs> or taking that uh, design because it was free and I'm just yeah. starting out. Um, but I learned a lot through experience. Absolutely. Let's, let's talk about your kind of, cause you know, even being you, you're, you, as you mentioned, you're kind of a contract worker, right? You're a free freelancer from the, um, from the graphic design world. How do you get new clients with graphic, how do you market yourself in a in a freelance world? Oh man, I, that's a good question. I, I feel like I need to learn some of that. I think <laughs> just by the grace of God, I would say so. That's what it feels like sometimes, just like a miracle. Um, honestly, a lot of my clients first came through Instagram, which I know is like not traditional. Um, I would post my collage work and then people would just reach out and be like, Hey, you know, you're creative. Do you do this? Do you do this? Uh, and then, so I started to kind of use that as like a marketing tool, like, Hey, I'll post my collage work and people will see me get excited about me. And then sometimes they reach out or brands will reach out and say, Hey, this is dope. What else do you do? Nice. And then I'm ready to come in just like, bah, 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 bah. I have this portfolio. I got all this stuff. I'm ready to go. <laughs> nice. And what all do you have in your portfolio? Just again, I'm I'm thinking of like for those folks at home that are thinking of maybe, you know, maybe they want to get into graphic design one day. What should they expect? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, print design is not dead. <laughs> People still need, you know, flyers and packaging, um, learning how to be able to talk to printers and understanding like paperweights and textures that is really important. I had no idea. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Right. Uh, and again, it wasn't until I went to a printer and I said, Hey, I have a client that needs this. Uh, you know, what can we do? And I just sat there at the printers all day going through paper and touching it um, wow. and learning from them. That's cool. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that there's so many facets to every part of business that really as an entrepreneur you don't understand until you begin to dig into that business that you're realizing oh it's an onion and there's a lot more layers to this onion and sometimes you cry <laughs> like, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so, what what oh, would yeah. you say has been easy about this process oh man um <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. There are a lot of layers and you don't realize how not easy it is until you take that step. So I would say sometimes the easiest part is taking that first step by committing yourself and saying like, look, this is going to be my goal. This is what I'm going to go for. Uh, and as long as you have that persistence, you know, if you fall down, get back up, always get back up. Um, because that's the only way that you can continue. You can learn, you can grow. Otherwise, you know, if you just, if you give up, then there's no way that you'll be able to see if you're able to get it, be able to get to that or not. Yeah, it's true. You know, like if you go to my website, the first quote I have is a quote I use pretty consistently. And that is, I've never failed a day in my life. I either learn or I succeed, right? Because I feel like saying I fail says I gave up. I stopped trying. Mm -hmm. I'm done. You know, and I, I just don't do that now. And you know, let's flip it what has been difficult about starting this either from the graphic design perspective or from the, uh, uh, the, the, um, uh, art perspective. Oh, uh, I would say both of them, you know, there's this hidden layer, like you're saying of like accounting and just like <laughs> business practices. You're like, what I, yeah. I have to do this. <laughs> yeah. That's the worst. <laughs> and, it really is. It really is. So, you know, get some QuickBooks or <laughs> um, take take a couple of accounting lessons on Coursera. I mean, those really helped me to just understand the basics of accounting, like how to put my money away for taxes and um, how to make sure I have enough cash flow as a freelancer or even an artist when I have those slow months that I'm still going to be OK and that I'm mm -hmm. not going to just like freak out like I did for the first three years. 
sometimes you just got to do it, right? Tessa, kind of like just jump in the fire and kind of figure it out. Jump in the deep end kind of thing. Now, what continue to motivate you? Oh, man. Uh, The realization that you can do this. Like, it's the craziest feeling ever. Um, When I was growing up, there was no option of being an artist or (laughs) uh, a freelancer. You know, like it was, I was thinking of going to school for accounting specifically. And I was like, well, I'll just work in an office you know, get the benefits, get good pay. Like that was the only things in my mind. And then as you're doing it and you're realizing it's slowly killing you. Like, <laughs> sucking, <laughs> sucking your life out of you. Absolutely. Then you're like, hold on. Like there has to be a way to integrate things that I like into this. Um, and so that's really, that's been my like pushing factor to keep going. It's like once you're able to kind of achieve it, and then you look back and see how far you've come. And you're just like, wow, I went this far. Like maybe next year, can I can I push it a little bit more? A little bit more. Can I do a little bit more projects? Um, and just to keep growing. Where where do you see yourself in five years? You know, keep growing. Where where are you where are you at? Um, I mean, I would love to I want to hit that like six figures. That's that's my biggest thing, you know, because I feel like when I hit that. Then I'm going to be able to put stuff away for like, you know, a 401k for savings, yeah. um, really start to like build my life up. Uh, you know, right now it's humble beginnings and I love it. You know, I'm, I'm used to this. I thrive in this. <laughs> uh, but to be able to like reach something like that, I see that as like success in my eyes. You know, you mentioned when you first started um, creating these pieces, a lot of it was free. A lot of the work was free. Now, what you currently do you now charge? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I charge for <laughs> not only my time, and I encourage everyone to do this too, but you need to charge for the years of experience that it took you, all of the lessons that you've learned. You know, some of the best advice that I've gotten is uh, you're able to do that thing in like five minutes because you had those three, four, five years of failure or learning and you know the growth that it takes you need to make sure that you're charging for all that too yeah that makes sense that makes sense you know what what would you say you know are the things that kind of keep you up at night about your business about being a freelancer Uh, I think the same thing as every freelancer uh, which is what if my clients all disappear in one day (laughs) it's totally uh, irrational you know, sometimes it feels like that, but as freelancers, you know, we just got to keep going. That is, we are hustlers. Like we are hustlers. We got to keep going because if you don't, you don't eat. <laughs> yeah. You eat what you kill kind of thing. That's right. Now, what advice would you have for the listeners at home, either from an artist perspective or a freelancing perspective? Uh, My biggest piece of advice, and I always tell everyone, is that you can do it. It is possible. Um, You know, we might have different backgrounds, but especially nowadays, I feel like there's such a great community of support. There are people out there that want to see people like us succeed and be able to live their passions and their dreams and be happy. Ah, I like that. You got to be happy. Now, for those folks at home, where can they find you? Where can they find your work? Where can they buy some of your pieces? Where can they Where can they support your artwork? Yeah, well, IG is where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> slide into the DMs. <laughs> slide in, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, y'all can find me at Savina Monet, M-O-N-E-T, uh, or hellomonet.com. Funny enough, my name was taken. So I was like, well, I guess I got to do this. <laughs> nice. And and again, folks, for those that are listening, please subscribe to the newsletter. All of this information is going to be on the newsletter. And again, uh, we're going to be at the Juntos event. So please join us. It's a five-part series for 17th. Really going to be a fun, fun time. I've been able to interview a few different artists already, was able to interview uh, the actual um, creator, uh, Christian, uh, about this as well. So I'm excited because, you know, there's going to be a lot of great artists, a lot of great food, uh, some 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 beer and some wine, so some adult beverages there, but also bring the kids because there's also an opportunity to build some pañatas and all sorts of different things. So, you know, as I think, uh, as Savino was really saying, it's going to kind of 
highlight the the diversity of what is the Hispanic culture. And guess what? We're not all just from Mexico. It's a shock. I know. I'm, I know. Savina, is there anything else you'd like to say to the audience before we head out? Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Gabriel, for, you know, having me be a part of this. And I just love building community and sharing my story, inspiring others. Uh, so thank you. I love it. So folks, don't forget to follow her on the Instagram. You can also follow the Shades of E at the Shades of E on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. So uh, please subscribe to the newsletter and have a great night.